The new iMac. Colorful. Smaller. Squarer. Thinner. More productive? I don't know. Let's talk. Hey there, friends on YouTube. My name is Jason, sometimes known as the JTL. This is Painfully Honest Tech. Tech so honest it hurts if this is your first time here. Thanks for stopping by. If you've been here before, thank you for coming back again. I hope, no matter what, that you'll all come back again. There are ways that you can do that, you know, buttons and such. But let's get to the topic at hand. The brand new M1 IMAX. They have a new design for the first time in I think like 12 or 13 years, there's a new design for the iMac. They have the M1 chip that we've used in the Mac Mini, the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air that came out last year. So we know that they are more powerful by a lot than we would have expected before. Uh, it's a little bit different this time because Apple was promising a lot when they announced those other computers and nobody really believed that they could deliver. Now we know they can deliver. So what are they gonna deliver with this desktop computer. Is this desktop computer even something that people want? Uh, it's replacing the 21 inch iMac and I haven't seen the sales numbers, but I have, I, I don't think that the 21 inch iMac really was a big seller for Apple. This is a much more powerful machine. It's a, it's a more powerful machine by 85% according to Apple's uh, discussion. That's a lot of percent. So. Whereas the 21 inch iMac was uh, sort of hindered by the fact that it had lower end chips and it wasn't all that powerful and I don't think any of them had dedicated graphics, this machine will bring all of the power, speed, efficiency that the MacBook Pros and the Mac Mini and all that that we saw earlier, it is bringing that all to the iMac form. Not only is it bringing it to the iMac form, but it's bringing it to the iMac form that is now a different form than it's been since 2008, I believe. <laughs> uh, so early reactions, have we, people have had a lot to say about the colors. I personally am not a fan of the colors. I'm sure, it, as, as happens with many Apple devices, I'm sure that when I see them, I will like them better than I like them right now. But I'm not a fan of the colors. I would choose a space gray, the only one that I would probably consider buying is the silver. Maybe, maybe when it comes out, I'll get a wild hair and go for like the red or the purple or something like that. But I don't think so. Uh, however, I do recognize that there are plenty of people out there who, you know, this is their jam. It might be your jam. And so the colors, I, it's a choice. People are complaining about the fact that there's still a little chin underneath the screen. I believe that the chin is probably there to house the, the logic board, or at least a part of it, as well as the cooling fans and that, that sort of thing. I was never, I was never somebody who was bothered by the chin on the iMac. I know a lot of people were. And so the fact that it's still there is fine to me. If it didn't have a chin, then it would, it would just look like, it would just look like an led monitor. But the question is, for you, the average person. And because that's, I'm trying to think about the average person more these days inside of this tech world that we live in. Everybody who does tech videos, we talk to each other, we talk in live streams, we talk to the cameras, we talk about tech all the time. And we all have very specific needs and wants when it comes to the tech that we use. Unfortunately, that tech is often not the tech that the average person would need or would in, would enjoy or would be perfectly fine with. So it's important for me right now to think about, okay, here's this new iMac. Who is it for? Is it worth considering? Now, as I said, the 21 inch iMac was not a popular device by any stretch of the imagination. And that could be for a lot of different reasons, the lack of power, et cetera, et cetera. But desktop computers are not a big market anyway. Uh, when I see an iMac out in the world, usually it's a 27 inch iMac. Maybe this fills a spot that people have been wanting to fill, a 24 inch smaller desktop computer. I'm not sure. Uh, you, you let me know down in the comments below. Do you think that there's a market out there for a desktop computer like this as opposed to, you know, a laptop or something like that? I, new keyboard, new mouse, new trackpad that go with the lighter, uh, the lighter sort of color palette. Uh, the, the trackpad and the mouse are both white as well as the top of the keyboard. The keyboard now has Touch ID, which is nice. 
And so we've got a, the colors that are available are blue, green, red, silver, yellow, orange, and purple. Those are available in the two higher end models, the two higher spec models, the, the lower spec model, the lowest spec model that you could get for $12.99 is uh, blue, green, red, silver. As I said, silver is where I would normally go, but I may go, if, if I get one to review, I may go with a different color. If you want me to review this machine, please let me know down in the comments. Now, from, a, from the standpoint, knowing the M1 Max that I've already used, and I've used basically all of them, they are more computer than you could get for the money than anywhere else right now. The power of these machines, the speed of these machines, the capability of these machines is leaps and bounds above any Windows laptop or computer that you could get. Yes, Windows and Mac are different. Yes, in terms of playing games and that kind of thing, Macs are different. The argument used to be that, you, well, you could build a cheaper Windows computer for the amount of money that you were paying for that iMac or whatever. But now that's not true. At $12.99, $14.99, and $16.99, this computer just blows anything else in its product category away. The only problem that I see, as I said before, is that I don't know that there's a product category to blow away. Do you need this computer? Do you want this computer? If it's something that you would choose to buy, then it's then it's the perfect computer for 95.9, almost 100% of everybody. It's going to fall down if you're trying to use it for video, audio, like, you know, as the master system for all of your tech needs and you're a professional, this machine will fall down. You want to wait until later on this year when they release a larger iMac or a larger MacBook Pro or something like that with more powerful chips and more in and out uh, than what we've got now. This machine, instead of having the normal SD card reader, USB-A, Ethernet, Thunderbolt, etc., etc., this computer comes with two USB-C, uh, just regular USB-3 ports, two USB-C Thunderbolt 3 ports, and nothing else. Uh, the two higher-end models are the only ones that have the USB 3 ports, and they also have an Ethernet port in the power brick that is no longer inside the computer. I guess now the computer is so thin, they can't put the power supply inside. I guess that's good. If the power supply burns out, then you just replace the cable. They come up with this whole new cabling system, and the Ethernet is part of that cabling system. It goes into the brick. I don't know who would buy this over a laptop that is basically the same price as this. You can get for $14.99 the MacBook Pro. You can get the, the MacBook Pro 13 inch for $14.99 at, uh, and that has 512 instead of 256 gigabytes of RAM. If you're comparing this to what's already out there, the M1 Mac mini, the MacBook Pro, the MacBook Air, for $12.99, you can get a new M1 MacBook Air for cheaper than that. You can get a new M1 MacBook Pro with 512 gigabytes of storage then instead of the 256 gigabytes that comes with the 1499 uh, iMac, you can get that for the same price. And in 2021, I don't think anybody should buy a computer that has 256 gigabytes of storage. That's where this computer starts to fall down. Two of the models, 256 gigs of storage, not enough. The only one that I would consider buying at $1699 is the 512 gigabyte storage model. And once you get up to $1699, I know that I could get an M1 Mac mini and a monitor and come out on top. Now, not, I don't have the aesthetics. I don't have the 4.5K you know, screen, et cetera, et cetera. But these machines might just be hindered by their specs in a way that the previous M1 machines are not. My advice to you, if you're in the market for a new machine, a new desktop computer, these machines will be powerful. They will do everything that you want, but you have to pick wisely. You have to get 
at least 512 gigabytes of storage. They all come with eight gigabytes of unified memory. I don't find any problem with that. I've used both 16 and eight gigabytes in the M1 machines that came before. There's gonna be virtually no performance difference between these, these iMacs and those. So eight gigabytes is perfectly fine for almost anything. I mean, I've, I've edited 4K video, et cetera, et cetera, with that spec. So if you're in the market, you have to spend $16.99 to start if you want to get into 512 gigabytes of storage. That's not a bad price, but it it's a price range where you have other options, and those other options could be as powerful, as good, for less. So, is the new iMac worth considering? Yes, yes, it's worth considering, but should you buy it on April 30th when they become available to pre-order, should you go on Apple's website and click that buy now button? That, that's tough. That's tough because they're not, because at, at, at the core, these are M1 laptops in iMac form. And if that form is what matters to you, if the new design is what matters to you, then it's, yeah, go ahead. However, don't get a model with 256 gigabytes of storage. It's just not enough. It still remains to be seen if there's actually a market for these things. And see, we shall. Within a month's time, they'll be in our hands and we will know. Anyway, thanks so much for being here. I really do appreciate it. Uh, you can watch another video on subjects related to this uh, going to pop up on the screen in just a few seconds. If this was your first time here, thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you'll do it again. If you've been here before, thank you so much for being a, a part of the painfully honest community. Do look at the merchandise down below. Do look at the memberships that are available down below to become more a part of the painfully honest ecosystem. If that's not something you can do, I just appreciate you being here. I really do. Thank you so much. Once again, my name's Jason, so sometimes known as the JTL. This is painfully honest tech tech. So honest it hurts. Until the next time, I'm out.